Hello everybody, welcome to a uh, Fantasy Grounds Gen Con stream about how to create a D&D &D character in Fantasy Grounds Unity. My name is Doug Davison, I'm the president and one of the owners of Smiteworks, the creators of Fantasy Grounds and Fantasy Grounds Unity. And we have Jen Page, the Jen Page, uh, who is our marketing specialist and, uh, and the brains behind the operation. So... <laughs> Uh, so uh, hopefully this runs pretty smoothly. I am not the one that normally does any of our streaming sort of stuff. So this is a little bit of a newness for uh, for me and for even for Jen, I think too. Jen's normally a participant uh, with someone else that's more knowledgeable running the, <laughs> the scenes. All right, so it is uh, five minutes after though. So let me jump in and I'm going to jump to the next stage, which is... Um, when you're creating a character, there's a couple things to keep in mind. When you have Fantasy Grounds or Fantasy Grounds Unity, uh, it comes with no data. Uh, when you first open it up, there's no data at all. So the very first thing you need to do is determine what data you want to have as a source for your characters. So there's a couple different ones. There's the SRD data, stands for System Reference Data. If you're not familiar with Dungeons & Dragons, that is a subset of the real rules that, that Wizards of the Coast has released to everybody to use for free. We have that built into the Fantasy Grounds application, so you can select those and you can build basic versions of the majority of the t of the characters within D and D. Like it'll it'll have one type of fighter, one type of cleric, one type of wizard, uh, you know, one type of each of the major races from the player's handbook. Only a single feat, but a subset, you know, the majority of the spells and items and that sort of stuff. So you can pretty much get up and running uh, with with that if you want. Uh, the other options are you have a number of different official D&D sources. You have the D&D basic rules, which also comes included with Fantasy Grounds. That includes uh, a few more classes and different options. Uh, you have the D uh, startup kits, kind of like the D&D Essentials kit, Stranger Things, Rick and Morty, that sort of stuff, that each also have different subsets of the Dungeons & Dragons rules that you could use uh, to build characters. And then you have the full-on Player's Handbook, Thanathar's Guide uh, to Everything, uh, Wayfinder's Guide to Avron, all of those sorts of things that you could use. Uh, and then on top of that, you can mix in DMs Guild modules by uh, just you know going to the DMs Guild, finding uh, different types of supplements, which maybe add classes that have the, the Fantasy Grounds module uh, included. And then you can put that module in your modules folder, and then you can activate them as well. Uh, then we also have third-party 5e compatible modules, such as um, I've got an example of... of a module from the um, Cobalt Press, the Underworld uh, Player's Guide, and lots of different options there. And then at the end of the day, you can always do your own custom homebrew creations, which may or may not just be copies of the Player's Handbook. Like, let's say if you only have the Player's Handbook in print and you don't really want to buy anything else, you can load all of that into the program yourself. Uh, it's treated the same as a custom homebrew. We don't know if it's homebrew or official or whatever, but um, it doesn't matter. The program won't care what the source of it is as long as the data is in the right format. Uh, so we're going to step through some examples of that. I'm going to do a real quick uh, demo here. Uh, the very first thing we're going to do on this demo is I'm going to load up the SRD modules only and I'm going to create a uh, level one dwarf fighter named Fred and then we're going to test out that character in uh, a, a little mock battle against the goblin. So let me turn off my PowerPoint here, and I've got Fantasy Grounds open in the background. And the very first thing you're going to do is when you come up to the, the screen, it may look a little different depending on if you have a theme loaded. This is our default theme. And I'm going to clear that. You're going to go to the library section, and that's going to be in the bottom right hand corner. And then it'll have a lot of the modules you'll, you'll want to have open. So I'm going to go ahead and first, I'm going to remove all of these modules because I don't need these. And uh, so you'll click on the modules activation window. It's going to look across all of your purchases that you have in the program, uh, and I've got a lot, so I'm going to filter it here, and I'm just going to start removing different modules to keep this uh, as simple as possible. And all I'm doing is I'm just unloading them so that even though I still own these products, I don't want the, any of these products used in this campaign at this point in time, if that makes sense. So I'm getting rid of all of these. And now I'm going to switch back to all, and I'm going to just do a search for SRD is the fastest way to find it. These are the three modules that it comes with. There's a bestiary, a uh, section of magic items, and then one that just says SRD data. That has all the classes and the races. And once I've got these loaded, 
I can select it in my library and you'll see that I've got a number of different sections here. These are all index links you can click on. So classes, you'll see it's got barbarian, bard, all that sort of stuff. Um, and races, it has, you know, halfling, half elf, human, etc. So uh, once I've got that loaded, I'm going to go in and create my character. So close this down, go to PC for characters, and then I'm going to click on this open character wizard. This is a new feature that we've added. It's still in uh, beta right now, but it's pretty functional. Uh, in fact, there's a few bugs in here that we've identified and fixed in our test channel that I don't have in, in my current version right now, but that's okay. It should allow me to, to get going, basically. All right, so the first thing you're, you're going to do is you have this little wizard that pops up. I'm going to call my person Fred, when you can la you can change that later on. And then we're just going to step through these, these choices here. So I wanted to do a dwarf. Uh, and the SRD, there's only a single type of dwarf, so I'm going to choose a hill dwarf. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is there's a little shield icon here. Uh, and again, this will look a little different depending on which theme you have. But if I click on that, it'll bring up a little window. And it will have, I don't know if you guys can read this very well. It's a little small. Uh, but it has a list of all of the different features that a dwarf character might have. So his ability score increase, uh, he will get a constitution increase by two. Uh, and it has his age and all kinds of other stuff. So you could read about the character. You could see it all broken down here. This is basically essentially what you would do when you're creating your own characters. You would just fill out these, these elements. Uh, but you'll see here I've got Hill Dwarf selected, and then it's asking me for the tool proficiency. Um, dwarf should be a proficient in brewing, um, I'm thinking. And then I'll just go to Next. And then here's the, the stats page. So the stats page uh, by default will load up the standard array, which is 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8. You can reassign these. So if I wanted my person to be very, very strong, and I'm going to do a fighter. So I want strong strength and dex uh, and con. But maybe I wanted a better con than dex because he's a dwarf and dwarves are not necessarily the most dexterous of all. Uh, and maybe I don't want any dex. Maybe I want to put his uh, wisdom at a 13. He's not very charismatic, but he only has a 10 dex. Uh, on top of that, I have a racial bonus of a 2 to con, and I have a wisdom bonus of a 1 uh, probably from his hill dwarf uh, as well. So you can see how it's going to accumulate these values here. I'm just going to do that for now, but the other options we're going to cover are uh, dice roll, manual entry, and, and point by. So then I'm going to go to the class section, and I said I wanted to do a fighter. So these are all of the different type of classes that are available in the SRD. These will change as I add more sources. Uh, and then I'm going to add my skill proficiency. So I want to be skilled at... Um, maybe athletics and acrobatics. I'm not going to multi-class because I'm a single level character. If I wanted to make a higher than first level character, I would select this drop down and then it would give me additional options. All right, then I'm going to go to background. I'm just going to select the only background uh, that I have right now in the SRD, which is Acolyte, which doesn't really make sense for a fighter, but that's okay. Uh, and then here I'm going to select my languages. The languages are very important because um, it will actually change how you can communicate within the Fantasy Grounds game. So uh, let's say I want this person to be able to speak uh, maybe Terran. Uh, and he has a single language here. Or no, yeah, two languages. All right, Terran and Oren. All right, now I'm going to go to my inventory. And here's a list of gear. Now, your starting class actually comes with specific things that it tells you to do. So if you're making a first level character, you should actually refer back to your class, which here I would go back to Fighter open up the fighter window and read what kind of uh, inventory he comes with. You can make this window bigger or smaller. And I'm going to scroll down and look at his equipment. So I get either chain mail or leather and a longbow and 20 arrows. So I'm going to go with chain mail because he doesn't seem like a longbow type. So I'm going to go to armor. And I can either just uh, search for it. <clears throat> chain. How about chain? Uh, I am not. I'm still seeing kind of a live one. Looks like it's still running okay for me. All right. I'm not seeing a whole lot of uh, stuff in chat, but if chat, if you guys are still there, can you uh, shout out just so we know that you're still listening? All right. So I'll grab chain mail. I'm just going to drag it down to my inventory section. It's going to calculate my costs here. 
seven platinum and five gold piece because it costs 75. Uh, and then the other stuff I want is a martial weapon and a shield uh, or two martial weapons. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a shield while I'm here on my armor. And I'm going to show you what it's like when you like have a shield equipped versus not have a shield. Uh, and then I'm going to go to weapons and these are all the different weapons that are there that I can just kind of grab from. So any kind of uh, hand weapon. So I'm going to go with a hand axe. And uh, let's see, other gear. Uh, oh, I can get a light crossbow. How about a crossbow? Uh, let's grab some bolts. And a light crossbow. Oops, I grabbed magical arrows. I want regular arrows. Crossbow bolt. I think is actually under gear. There you go. And I'm going to right click and delete the item that I don't want. So if that happens, if you get something that you don't want, just right click on them. And then there's an option to say delete item that you can remove off your list. Uh, all right, so that's about it there. And then I'm going to get either a Dungeoneer's pack or an Explorer's pack. And he's a dwarf, so let's do uh, Dungeoneer's pack. Drop that down. All right, so I've got all my inventory. This person doesn't have any spells. Uh, I don't have any feats, so I'm just going to hit save, and it will create a character named Fred. And so this is my character. I can use this. I can assign a portrait, which I would like to do. Portraits are, or either you can double click on it and then browse through the folders here and find based off of what you have installed. Uh, you can, like I have a Baldur's Gate 2 pack, so I could grab a dwarf character from here, uh, or I could go to assets and portraits. And I could just say, I want to look for all my dwarf pictures that I have. Yeah. Uh, it is in classic as well. That is that is there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, feel free to give it a shot. It should be built in right now. And we're continually to, uh, to update it. So here I've got a dwarf character. I'm all set. Uh, as a dungeon master, the dungeon master would probably want to put him into the uh, party sheet and then into the combat tracker so let me see right here i want to get rid of these guys all right so that was our first step now we want to do a real quick just test of a few things to show how the character with no other real work other than the character wizard allows you to get up and play uh, pretty much right away so i'm going to um, load a goblin npc so i'm going to go to npcs and just do a search for goblin. And again, I've got the SRD uh, bestiary. So this is the bestiary version of the goblin. It's not exactly the same as the player's handbook. All the stats are the same, uh, but it'll have a different token. It won't have the artwork from the player's handbook. And it misses out on all of the fluff, like all the background information that you would normally get for a goblin. So that you would have to refer back to your actual monster manual for that. All right, so I've got a goblin and I've got Fred here uh, locked in battle. So I can jump right away and say, okay, I want to roll the initiative. Since I have a dex of 10, I get a plus zero. So to, to roll any dice, you'll see there's a little dice indicator next to things. I can pick up the dice and just roll it into chat. And I've got a 14 int. Uh, and so I go before the goblin. So I would go to my actions tab. And here you'll see I've got my crossbow and my hand axe already set up. Uh, and let's say I charged up to the goblin and I did a hand axe. I would drag my dice attack over and it would say that it hit and then I would hover over the damage, drop it on to the goblin and I've defeated the goblin. So this is a successful character. I've defeated a goblin. I'm ready to retire from Dungeons and Dragons and, uh, and live a life of luxury, uh, breaking, breaking barrels. So that's the, the simplest version of a character is a first level fighter, uh, about as simple as you can pay, possibly get. Uh, and that took, uh, you know, with explanations, um, you know, just a few minutes to kind of jump through. So let's do the same thing, but this time we're going to do a fifth level character and we're going to just zip through. I probably won't do all the inventory stages and maybe I'll just add in uh, armor or something like that. Uh, but let's do it again. So let's do this time. The character is going to be um, named Freddy. And yeah, go ahead.
Uh, that is correct. That is a limitation right now where it does need to be reset if you bring it into a brand new campaign. So I would make sure that you have a copy of that uh, character portrait image in your portraits folder so that you can easily just reassign it when you, when you join a brand new campaign. Normally, for those that are not familiar with, uh, with Fantasy Grounds, when you play in a campaign, that's normally the one that you, uh, you rejoin that same campaign every time and you stay in that same campaign throughout the entire course of an adventure or multiple adventures. Um, if you're hopping around a lot more because you're like an adventure league player, then you're going to uh, be exporting and importing and jo joining multiple campaigns more than likely. Uh, okay, so this time instead of doing the standard array, I'm going to show you the manual entry mode. Uh, and so uh, manual entry just lets you type in whatever you want, and it doesn't really filter. So here if you want to type an 18 uh, con, actually you want to have 18s and everything. Uh, Fantasy Grounds doesn't really care because this is between you and your GM, and I don't know what kind of homebrew, <laughs> homebrew rules everyone's running. So um, the GM will be able to look at this and see what your what your uh, stats are, but they won't, uh, I mean, they'll be able to even change it. But there's nothing that's going to pre prevent you from typing in anything you want if you went into manual entry mode. So it's just like bringing a character sheet to uh, somebody else's game where you've already got everything filled in. And, oh, I randomly rolled all sixes for every stat, you know. So uh, we've never seen that, I'm sure. So, all right, so that's manual entry, pretty straightforward. You'll just see it loads it into here, and then it adds on the racial adjustments after the fact. Um, if I wanted to switch and do a point by, point by uh, has a point by total. Normally it's going to be 25. It depends on the rules you're playing, if you're playing a heroic type game or not. That's in the player's handbook. You would just follow those rules. But here I could say, okay, well, I wanted strength to be high, uh, so maybe I'll make a 15. Oh, and you can't go higher than a 15 in point by normally, so we do have that restriction. Otherwise, if you want to do something different from that, just go to manual entry and then uh, fill it out You know that way. So let's say I've gone through... I set up some of these things here, and let's say I'm very overly aggressive with it. You'll see now as I start to go up higher, I do get this little warning that tells me that I have overspent the abilities that the player's handbook recommends. I've got 32, uh, and that's, there we go. So I guess 27 is, is what they recommend. So uh, I could jump with this, and then it would continue to add the extra skills and go, uh, and then I could pick my class, all that sort of stuff. Uh, the other way you can do it, I'm going to go back to my stats one more time is you could do the dice roll and it'll throw all the dice through the chat here does 46 drop the lowest um, if you like that you could just reassign them by clicking and dragging so if i switch the 14 and the 8 now those have been swapped if i wanted to shift it one bucket to the right i could just click these little arrows to send things over back and forth so pretty straightforward uh, if you don't like that roll you can re roll and I don't know, whatever you and your GM decide on the number of rerolls is kind of up to you guys to figure out. Um, yeah, that's what I normally roll. See, I normally get like fives and stuff. That's very much how it works for me <laughs> in real life. So you guys have witnessed. So let's just uh, roll with that. I got a background here. Uh, select that and goblin this time. And inventory, I'll grab... Um, Oh, actually, I want to go to a class. I wanted to show you a fifth level fighter. So I'm going to change it from level one to level five. And here you'll see that I also have a specialization that I need to choose. So I'm going to choose champion because, again, I'm only using the SRD right now. Uh, I'll go back through one more time and I'll show you what it looks like when you've got the player's handbook and a few other sources uh, active, basically. Uh, I'm not doing any multi-class, so all of those are in the fighter class. And now I've got a chance to do feats. So on feats, I could either choose the one feat that's in the SRD, which is Grappler, and that would add the feat to my uh, list, or I could say I want to do an ability score improvement, and this time I want to add, um, you know, something to, I want to add two points to intelligence, um, or if you're picking two, it's going to add one to each. That's that's based off of, you know, whenever you level up every four levels, uh, how you do it. So I'll just say intelligence because I don't like, being an Intelligence 5 character. <laughs> maybe 7 is not much better, but somehow maybe I read a book uh, on the off-season. So, um, so there we go. got that. And then now, uh, let's see. Ability score improvement. This should let me move forward. This is oh, duplicate skills. Okay, so I do have duplicate skills. I've got insight twice. Okay, so let's look at uh, so when I selected my skill specialization and my background, Insight was on both of those. So I'm going to switch 
from there to there. Uh, and that should let me save it now. Yeah, intelligence save. Cool. All right, so now I have Freddy. Freddy is going to get a different portrait because he doesn't want to look the same. He's changed his look as he's upgraded. And, uh, yeah, he's older now, wiser, uh, and has a mohawk and a little handlebar mustache. So that, that, seems, that seems good. Okay, so now Freddy uh, here, if I look at Freddy by comparison, let's open them up side by side. Oh, I didn't add any weapons. Oh, dang it. Kind of important. You can add stuff after the fact. So let's say that you forget, you did exactly what I did. You forgot to add uh, his inventory. You can still use the old fashioned way that we had within our system, which is you could go through and say, okay, well, I want to go to here. You know, I'm creating a PC for instance. So I want some items and I want to grab a weapon uh, and I want to grab some armor. All right, so I've loaded those sources. Now, uh, let's see, I can grab so chain mail. I think it's just called chain. Yeah. All right. Chain mail with a space. That's probably what. It, let's say I've got a uh, chain mail of, I don't know, fire. Looks like fire resistance. Maybe I've picked up some magic items along the way. So go to inventory, uh, drag that in to there, and mark it as equipped. And I'm going to grab a shield. Maybe he has a shield plus one because he's a fifth level character. He's got more stuff. And uh, let's see, that's good for armor. And I'll just grab a, uh, let's see, a club plus two. And a javelin. Cool. All right. So now that I've added those, uh, I now have some actions. And you'll see that I've got um, these things set up. He should have... Oh, he's got really bad. Oh, he's got really bad stats. That's what I forget. Yeah. So, because when I rolled, I rolled horrible stats. <laughs> he might actually get beat up by this first level character. Um, yeah. So that that's how you would make a character like a higher level character. Just gives you more options, and it does the hit point calculation for you. So I have more hit points at least. Uh, as I get pl uh, pummeled by this lower level character, then that would work. Um, that is there. So let's try one more thing. Let's load some additional sources. So to show you the plan here. So now we're going to load in the player's handbook, the dungeon master's guide, uh, maybe the curse of straw player's handbook, uh, because that has an extra background that we might be able to utilize. And I'm going to actually load a third party uh, module for the underworld player's guide from Cobalt Press. And then we're going to try to create a third level drow. Um, and I'm going to show you the two different types of drow because when we have third-party assets versus built-in stuff, they actually behave a little bit differently. We're actually going to go with the built-in uh, drow elf, and then we're going to choose the archetype for the arcane trickster. And Jen's going to try to help keep me on track so that I don't forget inventory. Um, I'll at least give him a weapon and, a, and armor at least. All right, so harsh language. Yeah. All right, so... Um, so that's good. So let me switch back to here. I'm just going to remove these. We're going to start a new character. This time it's going to be a rogue name. Oops. Roder. All right. And we're going to say, oh, before you load it, I'm not even following my own instructions. So here I've got these modules. I'm going to go to modules and I'm going to load in the additional sources. Give it a second to load them all up. It takes a little bit longer when you have 1600 or so items in there, but it works. All right. So here you can also search by author. So I want to look for like maybe Wizards of the Coast. So that narrows it down to just show me things that are Wizards of the Coast products. This will only also show you things that are 5th edition uh, content. So I want the Player's Handbook. So I want the Curse of Stride Player's Guide. That was one. And you'll see them start to add into the, the windows onto the right there. Um, and I'm going to grab Player's Handbook. This takes a little bit longer to load. 
And I think I said Xanathar's Guide. Yeah. Uh, there might be some third-party tools for that. I'm not familiar with uh, with the current state of them right now. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. So to repeat the question, so someone asked if uh, it was possible to import characters from outside of Fantasy Grounds. And so that depends on whether or not there's a third-party tool for it. I'm not familiar with uh, anything right now that, that is importing them from D&D Beyond. Uh, as long as they're in a specific XML format, they would work. So it is a possibility, but I'm not... I'm not familiar if there are any tools out there for that currently. You can also export and import Fantasy Grounds character, which I'm going to cover uh, later in the video as well. So you can kick this character out, save it as XML, and share it with the GM to load in elsewhere. All right. The other thing we're going to do is the Underworld Guide from Cobalt Press. And that was going to be it. All right. Underworld Player's Guide. All right. So I've got a handful of new modules now. So you'll see a little bit of a difference when I go through to create a new character. So um, I'm going to go through here. And now you see I've got a lot more uh, options on races. So Darrow, for instance, and then there's a whole race where the, the high-level race is called Drow. This is from uh, Cobalt Press. And so it's got different types of uh, you know Drow here, sub-races called a Delver, a Fever Bit, and a Purified Drow. And so if I select that, you can see here's my, my sub options that I could then look at and refer to what each of those mean. That's because I was, it's pulling from that other source. If I want to go back and let's say I want to change my race to a different race, I just expand this section back out and I want to go with the player's handbook version instead. So I'm going to go with an elf and then choose dark elf drow. Uh, okay, so now that's loaded. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much about the, the same as what it was before. The only difference now is that we're using uh, player's handbook material instead. So I've got this uh, level, level three, so that we have an archetype. And I'm going to do um, maybe s stealth and perception and deception and athletics. All right, so now you'll see onto the specialization. I have more than just the player's handbook options available because it's looking at stuff from Xanathar's guide, for instance, as well, um, and other modules. So I still wanted to go with just Arcane Trickster. I'll load that one in. And when I've selected that, it's going to do a few extra uh, things now for me, too. So let's select a background. I'll be a, a haunted one was the background from Curse of Strahd. So I'm going to use that one. Uh, and you'll see I've got Perception twice. So it's giving me a notice that I've got duplicate skills selected. Uh, let's go ahead and grab those two. And so I want to go back and select something other than perception. So maybe uh, acrobatics. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. So um, right now we try to do. And this is something that we're going to continue to, to work on depending on the data. So we're going to try to distinguish if, if the data is the same, we're only going to show a single option. Uh, if the data is different, we're going to present multiple options that will allow you to select which one. And it'll have some indicator in here when I go back to the class section so that, let's say, um, I mean, in fact, a lot of these, like under race, uh, the way our modules are set up, a lot of these races are actually repeated in multiple sources, but with a different subrace. So all it did was add extra subrace options. Um, but as far as like which which one it's going to link to, that's a, that's a tricky question. We're just still playing around with what's going to make the most sense for for you know most players and DMs on, on how to use that. So uh, stay tuned and you know let us know your thought and provide feedback on how you would like this to look. If you would rather just show the duplicates uh, with the different sources or if you would like it to try to collapse those down. And that's what we're trying to do right now is we're trying to intelligently collapse them. Um, and that's what we think we're going to stick with. But let us know when you play with it. Yes, OK, so uh, the question was, is there a way to make a um, a blade slinger wizard from the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. 
Uh, the source code adventures guide is actually in here, yes. So that is one of the options you could select uh, if you have that source open before you open the character uh, wizard. I'll actually load the Sword Coast Adventures guide. Jennifer, help remind me when I go to load modules again. Uh, and then we'll turn that on and I'll show you where that should show up in the list for you to be able to choose from. I'm just gonna grab a rapier. And I'm gonna grab uh, armor real quick, maybe studded leather. And that's it for this character. All right, and spell, oh, so here's the difference. So spells now, Spells now has uh, some other selections. So because I've got uh, Arcane Trickster was my archetype, now I have an option to choose my spell. So it tells me I've got cantrips, three cantrips. So I'll do, uh, let's say, Blade Ward and uh, maybe Shocking Grasp and, I don't know, Minor Illusion. Actually, I'm going to do Poison Spray because that way I'll show you how the spells come in. All right, so level one... Uh, let's grab shield. Shield is a great one to demonstrate because that's just something that you'll see a lot uh, when you're playing the game is how to activate your shield and how to you know do that after the fact. Uh, and let's do let's see magic missile. And uh, I'm gonna do thunder wave. Probably would pick different spells uh, for an arcane trickster, but I wanted to kind of demonstrate a little bit of some of the more damage based, save based kind of spells when it creates this character. All right, so I hit save, uh, and now I've got this character. Again, I've got to assign a portrait. And uh, let's see, I made a draw. So let's say, there we go. The other stuff we're gonna cover later too, which is basically under the notes, all your personality traits, ideals, bonds, flaws, that sort of stuff. Um, we have tables where you can roll all of those values or type them in or, or do whatever you want. Um, and then we have some random tables that you might use to, uh, to flesh out your character more. So it's more than just the stats, but I'm trying to show you how to get in very quickly and use stuff. So here I've got my actions, I've got a rapier, but then you'll see I have spells here. So uh, the, the default mode will say standard and group. The group just says that this is in a spells grouping. I like to switch this to the actions. And then here you can switch it into combat mode for the action. So it just tells me Blade Ward, and you'll see I got this little effect that will give me resistance versus bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like real quick. Even though this isn't about how to play Fantasy Grounds, we're gonna to touch a little bit about the automation that kind of uh, makes Fantasy Grounds neat. So let's do the same thing with this little goblin, which is, let's see, go to library. I'm gonna go back to play mode now. There we go. Grab my goblin from before. And now uh, let's assume that I have blade ward active. When I go to cast a spell, I just drag this little pendant and drop it on myself. So it provides resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, slashing. So let's say the goblin uh, on its turn, let's see if it just hits me anyway. Okay, so he did actually hit me. And now it's gonna deal damage. And I should have resistance because this is doing slashing and I have resistance to slashing. So uh, they rolled six points of damage, but it only actually dealt three points of damage to me and updated the, the character sheet with the, with the wounds. So here I've got three wounds, <clears throat> basically. So that's, um, that's how you get kind of the automation from the spells. Not all of the spells are 100% automated. There are some things that you can kind of go through and, and add. There's also things like sneak attack. Notice that there's no special action in here for sneak attack. And so that's something that you can add with some of the advanced effects that we have within Fantasy Grounds. So I'm going to show you really quickly how you could add your own effects. Uh, go to our wiki under the 5e rule set. There's a whole list of effects and special syntax that you would use. But as a quick example, I'm going to show you, you would just edit the list here, add a new power, and I'm going to call it uh, Rogue Abilities, and I'm going to call it Sneak Attack. Okay, so this is... Um, there we go. So now I've got, uh, I'm out of edit mode. I've got my rogue ability here for sneak attack. Doesn't do anything yet. So the way you get it to do something is you right click on it and you get all these different options. One of which is add action. So we're gonna add an action and then we can add a cast action which would give you like a saving throw or an attack roll. Uh, we have a damage, a, uh, a damage action, which would allow you to basically deal fire damage or something like that, like a spell or a spell-like ability that you might have for your character. 
we have a healing thing. Yes, yeah, so you right click uh, and then you have this, ra this is called a radial menu. So uh, it's like a, you know, things around a clock centered around the center point here. So, and then when you get to the point that you want to activate the further menus, you click on this one and then it extends and gives you another set of options, like multiple tiers of options, uh, basically. So then I've got, so damage, I've got healing available, and then I'll have an effect. So I'm going to add an effect, and then here it'll have an effect and has zero around. There's a magnifying glass. Wherever there's a magnifying glass, you can click on that to expand and select more stuff. And so I'm going to use our special language uh, <clears throat> for filter. So I'm going to say damage uh, 2d6. I think it's 2d6 at third level. I think it's every other level. Um, and then here, I've been switching back and forth between game systems, so sometimes I get, I get confused. All right, so it's going to last for how long? Uh, it's going to last for, the, you know, one round, basically. And is it going to be uh, target? Like, am I going to be able to drag this effect on someone else and give them 2d6 damage? No. In this case, it's going to be a self thing. So whenever I apply this effect, it's going to give me bonus damage on my next damage roll. And then the expend, you can set it to never or on the next action. So you're going to turn this on, like whenever you're uh, available to use sneak attack damage, I'll turn it on. Then whenever I roll damage, it'll add an extra 2d6 to my damage roll. And so that's all set. I'm all ready to go. And so now if I was fighting this goblin, let's say I snuck up on the goblin and he didn't see me, uh, I could first turn on advantage and do my attack roll, <laughs> which uh, missed with advantage. But um, Again, let's assume that I had hit and I'm ready to deal damage. Uh, then I would turn on my effect, just click it once, and you'll notice that here in my effects window, I have multiple effects. I have the resisting bludgeoning, which I probably want to turn off now because it's a new turn. So I'll turn that off when I start of this turn. And then um, I have damage 2d6. So if I roll a regular rapier, it's going to do 1d8 plus 3. If I pick it up, you'll see it has a D8. When I actually drop it on my target, this could be um, in the chat window directly, and then you could target it after the fact, or you could drop it on a target in the combat tracker or on a map token. You'll see it actually rolled an extra 2D6, and so uh, all of that's in there. So I rolled a 6 on the D8, uh, and then another 7 on the 2D6, plus my 3 bonus. So that is another dead goblin. Uh, so far. So, so far we're doing pretty good. Our characters are, are doing alright, other than the fact that I had to pretend like I hit. Should be good. Alright, so that's a that's a rogue. Uh, we're doing pretty good on time. We're about 42 minutes in. Uh, I plan on covering a wizard as well, uh, modifying a class, forging some magic. I think we're doing alright, but if you have any questions, definitely throw them to, to Jen, and, uh, and we'll go from there. So let me jump ahead, and we are going to go to the next stage. Uh, which is building a wizard. And we kind of did a, a quick covering on this, so I'll do it very, very fast. A known wizard named Nugal, 6th level, uh, and we're going to select her spells, and then we're going to demonstrate uh, more impressive spells. So basically, this is what you're going to do. You're going to go through same same issue as before. Nothing really... Oh, let me actually, before we do that, let me show you the Sword Coast Adventures guide, because that was a question. Jen? She had one job. She could have said that, and you guys didn't hear her, and I didn't hear her, so you never know. So we'll give her the benefit of the doubt. Uh, okay, so I actually wanted to load. So uh, within our modules, we actually break them up a little bit. So we have um, the Sword Coast Adventure Guide is one single book, but when we present the modules, we actually make a player version of it that only has the player content. So you can just load that up if you're a player. Uh, and then we have maps split out and the GM specific material. It doesn't matter if I load up too much. Uh, that's fine. It should all be fine. And I've closed out of that. So now when I go to create a character, uh, let's see, this is going to be a gnome. And she's going to be a forest gnome. Oh, here's an example. So there is multiples. I guess now we're doing multiples uh, of different ones. So we've, I'm selecting a forest gnome. And let's see, stats, I'm just going to go with the standard array and load her up on intelligence and dex and con sounds decent. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so let's see, class, 
Uh, you said a blade singer. That's a wizard, right? So wizard. Oh, I need to select level six. Okay, yeah. So once you're a high, I think uh, blade singer is what at level two you get to pick that, or level two or level three. I forget. But once I was high enough level, see level one didn't get, didn't present me with that option. But once I picked a high enough level wizard on the level level drop down, it provided the blade singer here uh, that I could select for my specialization. Um, Yeah, I don't. I haven't read up about blade singer, so uh, I don't know what else that has in it. But let's go ahead and run with that. I was planning on making a little bit different kind of character, but no big deal. All right, so grab some of those. Grab a background. Uh, you see now I've got a lot more backgrounds to choose from because I loaded in the Sword Coast Adventures guy, which is full of stuff. So I'm gonna grab as interim agent, blade singer. And but she has a forest gnome. This is the weirdest character of all, I think. Uh, primordial and halfling. <laughs> I'm just picking the weirdest stuff I can possibly think of now. Uh, same thing, you would pick her spells. I think she would get, uh, not her spells, you would pick her equipment. Quarter staff. I'm going to show you how to do um, magic items too. You don't do magic items in here, but you'll do it after the fact in the forge. All right, so inventory, uh, spells. All right, so now you'll see I've got level one, two, and three spells. And so I think you start off with four level one, or six level ones. The total is going to be eight, I think, from level one. Uh, let me get my cantrips real quick. So blade ward, dancing lights. Just grabbing a handful here. All right, level one, I've got like six, I think. So let's do burning hands. Um, I don't know. Uh, charm person is good because it'll show you an effect when you're putting an effect on someone. Uh, let's see, what's some other stuff I could do? How about hideous laughter would be a saving throw. So that would be good. Mage armor would be good. That'll show, uh, we can demonstrate mage armor is nice. Uh, and shield, which I meant to, sh to show earlier with shield. We kind of covered it a little bit with um, the, the other, was it Blade Ward? All right, level two, I should get like four of these, I think. Uh, so let's do Ray of Enfeeblement and Scorching Ray. I don't know, just go Spider Climb and Suggestion. All right, level three, I really want to hit level three because level three gives us fireball. All right, fireball and maybe dispel magic. And haste and there, okay. Somehow I missed, I think I'm doing too many. Yeah, I'm supposed to do another, there, all right. Uh, spells, yep, feats, uh, I can go with lucky, oh, and I think I already have one new gal, so let's make another one, all right, I gotta give her a portrait, a gnome, She doesn't know what to think about all of these things I picked, so she looks appropriate. <clears throat> okay, uh, so let's show real quickly uh, a little bit more interesting use of uh, some some stuff. Let's grab a I'm gonna grab a map. Actually, uh, I'm just gonna grab. All right, I'll say we're on Cragmall Hideout. And I'm going to grab her. Sorry. Grab her. Throw her in there. Get rid of this character. Get rid of this goblin. And I'm going to throw in a handful of bad guys real quick. So let's do uh, a goblin. And another goblin. 
and a hobgoblin and an ogre, maybe two ogres. Ogre and ogre zombie. All right, so I got lots of stuff here. There's H's and O's here for some characters that I, I don't have the monster manual loaded, so these are using just SRD stuff. All right, so if I want all these bad guys to be here, I can just drop them on the map here, make them visible, and now I can drop her on the map. Let's say this is her home. She lives in this little hideout, and all of these monsters showed up to try to take it from her. All right, so what she can do now she has Fireball, as you can imagine, she can target everybody in a realm of a fireball. So she would do the pointer first if she really needs to, to say, oh, are they going to be covered in her fireball, which they would easily be fit. All right, so I'm going to get rid of uh, pointers. Yep. All right, so she's targeted all of these, and you'll notice that in the combat tracker, she has all of them targeted. Now on her actions, she can go down, again, switch to this little actions mode, and you can put it in combat mode if you want. Um, I need to prepare it first, hold on. There we go. So she has it prepared and maybe she has a uh, lightning bolt. All right, so now, So I can say fireball, I click on this button, it's going to do a, uh, a dexterity save for everybody with a DC of 14. And anyone who uh, succeeds will only get half damage. So the ogre zombie is only going to get half damage, it uh, looks like because he succeeded. Um, I'm assuming it's a he, I guess it could be a girl ogre zombie, who's to say. Alright, and then uh, I'll do damage, it's going to do 86 fire. It's going to drop this through to everybody, and here you'll see um, it applied, I rolled a 31, so it did 31 to the ogre, only 15 to the ogre zombie, uh, and then 31 and 15 to everybody else, depending on whether they saved or not saved. So that's one of the benefits of, of Fantasy Grounds. Just very quickly, I threw that together, picked my spells, and then um, they were preloaded and ready for me to, to use pretty much right out of the gate with, with very little kind of effort. If I did, let's say that my character... I'm doing some kind of a weird homebrew thing, and I really want to modify how Fireball works. Maybe in my world, Fireball doesn't deal fire. It actually is something different. So I can click on this little button. Just keep following, basically, the, the magnifying glasses. And let's say I am in a different world where it's a cold ball. I can change it. I can just call this an ice ball. And now it's going to deal cold damage. Um, and let's say we've got... Um, and clear the wounds on these guys. All right, so I'll clear all of those. Everybody's unconscious, though, so I need to get rid of unconscious or they'll get um, disadvantage on their saving throw. It's weird how you get disadvantage on your saving throw when you're unconscious. Who would have guessed it? All right, and then I'm actually going to add, um, let's see, ice. What's In chat, what's a, what's a character or what's an NPC type that is uh, going to get resistance or vulnerability to to cold anybody in chat something with the word ice in it is probably good maybe ice method let's see if it has damage immunity so the ice method cannot get wounded so let's uh, grab the ice method drop it in here drop it on the map I'm going to target that one as well uh, anything that's vulnerable let's see how about maybe like a Salamander? Anybody in chat have any thoughts on that? Damage immunity is fire, but they're not... Oh, damage vulnerability cold. All right, so we're going to demonstrate vulnerability and uh, immunity in the same thing. So here's a salamander. Lots of things open. All right. So I need to drag the ice map on there. The salamander needs to be somewhere on the map. Right there. All right, so that's a salamander. So I'm going to go back to her, and she's going to target the salamander and the ice method, who I need to make visible. And she'll retarget everything all over again. 
do the same thing. She's going to do, um, yeah, so she's going to make him roll a saving throw. And if I look here, let's see, the salamander failed the saving throw, and it's going to be vulnerable to fire. So it's going to take double damage, um, basically. If it had made the saving throw, um, it would get half damage, and then double, it would just get, you know, standard 100% damage. It actually, like, balances itself out. Uh, let's see, the ice method failed its saving throw, but it should still, it shouldn't matter. So we're going to deal uh, ice ball damage right here and see what happens. Okay, so let's see, we did 30 to the ogre, 15 to the uh, ogre zombie. The ogre zombie is like a dexterous uh, little guy or something. And then the salamander took 60 because it doubled up the damage. Um, yeah, and then down here we have the ice method, which is, she's got zero. Oh, zero damage to the ice method, and it marked it as resisted. So it also told me that the salamander was vulnerable and the ice method resisted. So Fantasy Grounds did that for me. I didn't have to worry about it. And that's all because the spells are not, they're not just rolling 8d6. They're rolling 8d6 fire or 8d6 cold. So that's an important distinction between you know, uh, just regular dice roll isn't rolling your own dice and having the, the stats and the text that you're building the character. The whole point of building the character is just so that you can play the game in a streamlined fashion. So that's why we jump through the extra hoops of adding little bells and whistles and, and um, adding special effects to make the game flow a little bit smoother. Because if I was playing in the game, I may not have realized, um, you know, that the salamander was vulnerable. But the software did it for me and I didn't have to worry about it. Okay, um, let's say, any other questions? No questions coming in so far? FG Unity, uh, rough release date, we're looking, um, we're still going to probably stay in early access for a little bit longer. Um, we feel pretty good about it. There's still a few little niggling issues, network um, issues that we're still kind of working through, still continue to work on improvement of, of the speed, but we've really uh, greatly improved both of those things with, within the last month or so. So we're going to look at launching on Steam, I think in August here, and then uh, see how it goes on Steam, working across Mac and, uh, and Windows, and if we're lucky, hopefully Linux. Uh, and then from there, we're going to uh, just continue to, to work on it and, and then roll it out. But we definitely want to roll it out uh, you know, I'm thinking maybe October is what we're kind of looking at to get out of early access. It feels pretty close at this point, but we think maybe just a little tiny bit more time in early access. But you can get it now and play with it. There's nothing preventing anyone from, from playing with it and using it. Um, you know, the majority of people are using it. I help with customer support, so I kind of see where the problems exist and where people have issues. And the number of issues that we're seeing on Fantasy Grounds Unity uh, is much lower than what we were seeing on like Fantasy Grounds Classic with just questions and answers and stuff. So it's looking pretty good, and most of the feedback we're getting is really positive. So I think we're good to go there. Okay, yeah, so that's a great, great question. So um, attack is where you're basically making an attack roll. Like a, uh, you have to do it to hit, and it's normally against like their AC or something. Whereas the saving throw is going to basically force them to make a saving throw. And you'll see that when I did the saving throw, uh, it actually rolled the dice on behalf of the targets, uh, which is a little bit of a difference from um, like NPCs, if they do the same thing, will actually do the same thing to you. You can uh, manually, you know, disregard that and then have the players roll their own if you would. Uh, prefer that, but it just helps kind of speed things up so we automatically do that for you. The attack, if I look at, I think Ray of Enfeeblement maybe has an attack? Yeah. So you'll see Ray of Enfeeblement has an attack with a range plus six because I have to actually target that at a single uh, target. So let's say that I'm going to shoot this uh, attack here at the Salamander. So now I'm rolling a a uh, d20 and adding set, uh, my roll of seven and adding six to see if I hit or I missed. In that case, I missed. And you can see here it's ranged, um, and then you can say whether it's based off of your ability score, that sort of thing, or if it's a uh, melee attack. Because there are some spells where you have to physically touch somebody, so it'll it'll be coded appropriately to, as either a range attack or, or whatever. And it'll also take into consideration if they're prone. If I'm shooting a ranged attack at someone who's prone, 
uh, I'll have disadvantage. If, uh, if I'm doing a melee attack against someone who's prone, then I'll have advantage against that person. You can always override that. Uh, like, let's say, for instance, you're shooting against someone who you're right next to and they're prone. I think you can override that at that point and just do a straight-up attack. All right. Um, That's a great question again, too. So uh, right now, the character wizard is, we're just now rolling it out. We're working out like a few little kinks here and there, uh, mostly with third-party assets. So um, like there's a few bugs where like the language, that how they've specified certain abilities within uh, some third-party uh, modules is not the same as how Wizards of the Coast did it. So, you know, things get ignored and that sort of thing. So um, once we get those ironed out, we've already started working on the level up procedure. And, uh, and we have to just keep in mind that they may have built the original character with the wizard, or they may have just built it with the old-fashioned method, and then the wizard has to realize where they are within the leveling process and then continue it from there. So uh, we're working through just some, some extra little considerations with that, but we do hope to have that probably through the end of the year, by the end of the year, the ability to level up. No, you can do that. So the question was, uh, so there's this cast button here, and then there's an attack, and then there's a save. The cast basically does the, the right one. So like if I click this here, it did it against my targets for me automatically. If I was on uh, this one, it would automatically roll the attack against every one of my targets. So it'll do that for you automatically. Um, it's just kind of a personal preference. You could choose to do just the save or the attack, but really the cast will do the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the question is, once Unity goes live, how long will it take for other small rule sets to move over to Fantasy Grounds Unity as well? And so uh, we're continuing to work on that right now. We're not necessarily waiting for Fantasy Grounds Unity. That's kind of independent of Fantasy Grounds Unity going live or not. Um, we want all of them to be up and running. And so I know Deadlands right now, they just launched a new, brand new version of which I back the Kickstarter because I'm a huge Deadlands fan. Uh, and so I know the developer for that has that material. He's actively working on it. And we'll have it as ready as soon as it's available, basically. Are we doing questions? Is that good for... Yeah, I think so. Um, there's a little bit of... there's Pathfinder 2, for instance, kind of has a slightly different uh, variant on character creation uh, there which kind of has like a, a wizard type of feel. Uh, but we like the way that this kind of lays it out, makes it real simple, easy to use. So uh, our intention is that we will, once we have it out on 5th uh, edition Dungeons & Dragons, that we will basically port that and start moving it over to other rule sets. Okay, so Meerkat Manor asked if we could change the themes and icons. Uh, yes. In fact, there's a whole lot of different themes out there. Uh, there's several built in. Uh, and there are some for, you know, if you buy, like, official content, you'll also get backgrounds and stuff like that. You can change out your desktop. And you can just build your own themes. Uh, in fact, uh, Jen has two themes that are going to be launching once we get out of early access, or, or maybe even sooner, that are very, very close, like a light and a dark theme. Um, Joshua Watma, who is our, our uh, other staff artist, he does a lot of themes. He's got an industrial theme, sci-fi, all kinds of different themes that, that he's got as well. And then our community is always pushing out uh, new themes as well. I can. Uh, I, I believe it does, and so this is what I'm going to try to do uh, 
next actually was basically modifying an existing class. Uh, oh, so the question was, does it support? I'm sorry, I forgot to reiterate the question. The question was, does it, uh, does the custom class ability allow us to specify whether you have like, oh, mine has con plus two or a choice of strength or con or, or that sort of thing. So um, if I understood the question right, yes, you can do that same sort of thing. Uh, whether or not it says you can do the plus two or the one in one, uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure if we can do that, but we can modify, you know, what, what is provided on each class. So let me do that real quick. That was the next example was to create a homebrew version of an official class and swap out some abilities, create new abilities, adjust the hit points, uh, saves, etc. So let's do that real quick. Uh, so the way I would do that is I go to my library and I'm going to go to, uh, let's do races first. I'll show you like, like a custom race. So here you'll see there's three different dwarfs. So I'm going to start with the player's handbook dwarf. And I'm going to make a copy of it. So to make a copy, I'm just going to drag this shortcut and drop it back in here. And now I've got one, and you'll see that it's blank under the source. That's my custom one. So now that I've got a custom one, I can open this. And you'll notice that this, this one, you probably can't tell in here, but this is read-only. If I hover over, it's slightly red-tinted. And then this is just says locked. So I can unlock it now. And I can say, you know, my custom dwarf. And I'm going to call it a uh, strong dwarf so that it shows up differently in the list. Uh, and then for other, uh, here's the sub races. So I can still do a hill dwarf or a mountain dwarf. If I click on these, you can see what it, what it has. And then I can further click through and, and modify it. So what I want to do is I want to create my own uh, ability score increase. I want to create all that kind of stuff separately. So here for my ability score increases, uh, constitution is increased by two. Um, let's say I want to make it strength. Strength core score is increased by, let's say six in a period. And you can play around with this. I think uh, if I had an or option in there. Um, I just need to look at the or the way that they're set up in other, like I think human. Actually, if I look at human, if I'm not mistaken, human has multiple things that it does. Uh, it says your ability scores each increase by one. So that's something a little bit different. Um, let's see. I'm trying to remember if there are any that have an option. Oh, and your Christmas score increases by two. So you could do that. So let's try... For mine, I'm going to make my strong dwarf. Your bullet score increases by six, and your um, constitution, if I can spell it right, score increases by two. So, of course, this is exactly what I would want to do. And let's say you don't have any sub race because your strong dwarf is just what you are. All right, so I've done that. Um, the other stuff that you could do. Yeah, I could change out some traits. Maybe I don't want to get rid of this sub race because I don't have sub races. Uh, maybe I don't have stone cunning. Uh, maybe I don't have sp any speed adjustments um, because I, all of my stuff went to my strength and my con. Uh, but if I want to add something new, you could say create item and I could say um, extra jumping ability right because why not all right the character can jump an extra 10 feet in the air from a standstill yep he's super good he's had jumping beans for breakfast all right so now i've got uh this dwarf i need to change the name of it though up here strong dwarf there we go. All right, so now if I'm going to create a character, I'm going to go to PCs. And now I've got uh, a race of strong dwarfs selected. If I click on the link, it lets me read about it, and I can read all of its different abilities. Uh, but I'm going to select it, and everything else I didn't really change. You'll notice right out of the gate, even with the standard array, I've got a really good con. Instead of a 13, i got a 15, and I've got a... Uh, strength of 21. So if I look under the stats, you'll see that it picked up my 6 and my 2. Um, 
if you wanted to do, let's cancel out of that, and I'm going to look at the races of, does anyone in chat know which one of the, um, which race has a choice on uh, your ability increase? I thought that there was some here built in. Those are there, elf, dwarf, gnome. Those are just multiples. Nothing from chat? Nothing? Hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm glad it's not just me that's trying to figure that out. Yeah. Well, let's just try it with an or. So, uh... Okay, human variant. Let's check and see. Two, oh, there we go. So this is this is how the wording needs to be. Two different ability scores of your choice increased by one. So let's try that. And then I'm going to go back and try four or see how smart it is. It depends on how good uh, John and, and uh, Hollis built this, this part of the engine. I don't know yet. All right, so my strong dwarf, I'm going to modify him again. And this is going to be a um, flexible dwarf. Flexible in his stats, at least. All right, so now under his ability score increase, I will say... Oh, I need to look at that one more time. That was human variant, I think. All right, so let's try two different ability scores of your choice. I think the key is the of your choice, and then the two is obviously picked up. Increase by four, just to make it really, really stand out. All right, so this is my ability score increase. Yep. All right, so that looks good. Uh, build a new PC. Try it one more time. Mr. Flexible Dwarf. Oh, there we go. So now it's asking me, I've got two different selection windows. So select my ability score for the first one. So I'm going to throw it in dex was a 14. Now that made that a, oh, I made it a one, plus one. Did I say by one? I thought I said by two or four. Hmm. And then uh, another ability score here, wisdom was a 10. Okay, so that looks like a minor bug. It's not choosing increase by, it's only increasing it by one. So we'll have to make a note. I'll make a note about that one. See, this is in beta. So, uh, but it did allow me to choose each of the different ones that we boosted. Ability score. Only by one. Cool. All right. Good deal. All right. So that's um, how you would build that. Let's see. Uh, classes. If I did a custom class. So again, I'll go to my library. Pull up my classes window. And instead of a barbarian, I'm going to start off with a barbarian. And then I'm going to make a variant that I'm going to open up. And I'm going to call this one a, a bard variant. It's going to be a combination of a barbarian and a bard because, you know, that's what you need. All right, so this, you'll say it's got hit die per level. Because it's mixed with the bard, it's only going to get uh, 1d10 per barbarian level, a little bit weaker. Uh, it's still going to get armor, um, maybe not medium armor, maybe it only gets light armor. And saving throws, uh, strength and con, or strength and dexterity. Choose two from these. I'm going to add performance in here. So I can choose from performance. I don't know if there was a comma there or not. Uh, I guess we'll find out. Uh, armor, that's fine. And let's pull up Bard. See what Bard gets. Uh, let's see. All right, so let's give it spellcasting. 
from a bard, or maybe just bardic inspiration. Maybe it doesn't get spell casting, but it gets bardic inspiration. So I can drag bardic inspiration, drop that over. It should work. Oh. No, I actually have to create it. All right, so let's call it bardic inspiration. There we go. And now I expand it out. It gets it at level one. And you'd want to just drop that. Oops, that's not what I want. Yeah, you would want to put all that same sort of stuff in there. Others through blah, blah, blah. This should allow you to copy and paste it. Um, I think it's because it's still locked. Uh, i got to make an unlocked version of it first somehow. So, um, all right, so that's how you would do that. Now I've got Bardic Inspiration. And if I make a Barbarian version, so I'm going to do my Flexible Dwarf, boom, boom, boom. And my class is going to be a Barbarian. See it showed up in the list. And I could choose Performance because that's different. Uh, background, sure. Folk hero. Yep. Pick your inventory, pick your spells, and it recognizes, should recognize, oh, I didn't put spell casting. If I had brought over spell casting, I could specify that it had spell casting, and I could uh, define that as well, and then it would have showed up in the list here. But I didn't, so that's good. Um, Brad. Brad the Barbarian. And there we go. So now I've got a special customized class with uh, D10 hit points plus my con bonus. Uh, and there we go. All right, so that is uh, modifying a class. Let's do, um, so let's see, modifying a class, create new abilities, adjust the hit points per level, saves, all that sort of stuff. All of that is up uh, basically here. Uh, you tell what their dexter, like what their good saving throws are, that sort of thing. Um, how many skills they get, it says choose any three or uh, whatever, tools, weapons, just basically look at existing examples from the SRD or elsewhere, and then, you know, any book that you have, you could basically create your own version of that. Just type it in exactly as it is in the book, and uh, and it should recognize some keywords in, in a few instances. All right, so that is modifying class. Now we got forging of a magic, magic item. So now let's say I'm higher level and I'm getting ready to level up. Um, did I not do leveling yet? I guess I haven't covered leveling. Um, let's say I want to level up first. Let's do a super quick scenario of leveling up without the wizard. So when I want to level up in Barbarian, which is my custom class, I just basically open my character sheet, open my class list, and I just drag the Barbarian back to here, and now I'm a level 2 Barbarian. If I level, And notice my hit points went up to 18. If I go another level, I'm up to 3, and now uh, I still gave them the same... Uh, archetypes. So I had Path of Berserker or Totem Warrior. I probably would have created my own special path if I was actually going to make a custom class. So I'll select that and then you can just kind of keep going and you can add levels there. Let's say I got to level 5 and then I wanted... Oh, thank you. Good. Alright, sorry guys. Um, Jen, Jen is on top of it though, so thanks for telling her and then having her tell me. All right, so uh, I didn't show you guys any of that. So all right, so basically I dragged this barbarian over, and every time I do it, it adds an extra level. And at one point, it prompted me which path I wanted to take for my barbarian. So um, if I wanted to add a different type, like let's say I wanted to add a druid now, barbarian druid multi-class, I could add that in, and now I've got one level of druid. You'll see my hit dice now uh, splits it out differently, and it calculates my new hit dice and my hit points. Uh, if I want to level up in Druid now, I add that, and at second level I can choose which circle I want. So maybe Circle of the Moon. And let's say I go back to Barbarian again. Now I'm level 7 Barbarian, level 2 Druid. You'll see in the chat it's actually adding all this extra stuff, right? It's adding extra attacks and extra hit points, and um, if I had a, um, a weapon, my attack bonuses would go up as well. But all of these all of these items from those classes, if I look at Barbarian, 
this tells me what I get at what level. So at level, let's say I'm level 7 now. So I should have all of these things on my character sheet, including up to Feral Instinct should be there. And sure enough, I have Feral Instinct right here. And then I've also got a Druid, which I added. And so the Druid, if I look and see, well, I should have all the stuff for Druids up to level 2. Because I'm a level 2 Druid, I've got Druidic spellcasting bonus, blah, blah, blah. So... Uh, you can do multi-class characters from scratch if you do them in the wizard as well. So like if you know from the very beginning you wanted to be a, a multi-class character. So I could say, okay, I wanted to be a um, Mixo. And let's say I wanted to be just a regular dwarf and maybe a mountain, uh, no, maybe a hill dwarf. All right, and the class, let's say I wanted to start off as a barbarian. And I wanted to do, say, four levels of Barbarian. Battle Rager. And then I wanted to uh, add a multi-class. I just click multi-class down here, and now I pick the second class. So now I want to be a Druid, uh, level three Druid. So now I'm a level four Barbarian, level three Druid. That's a Circle of the Moon. And I could keep adding more multi-classes uh, from there. So. There you go, and I'm a gladiator who likes the dulcimer. And I gotta get a club. With a great club. Alright, and then spells. Now that I've got um, spells for my character, see, Barbarian has no spells. Druid uh, has spells that they can pick, so. Druid actually gets all the spells of its level. I think uh, I think we're still working on this. There's a there's an update that we should have in um, in test channel that should be rolling out really quick. That will allow me to select different sorts of uh, it'll it'll do the calculation for my spells there. All right, there we go, and I save it. And now I've got a level four barbarian, level three druid. All right, it's 21 after, so let's see. Uh, uh, I guess I would need to know, like, what example. There's a few things you can do as far as, like, um, making a modifier. So if you type slash help, uh, someone asked, I guess I should reiterate the question because you can't hear Jen. <laughs> so someone asked if you could still code in chat. And so I don't know what they mean by that, but if you type slash help, Here's a list of all of the different things you can do. So you can do dice rolls, for instance. Um, you can do modifiers and that sort of thing, and then you can reuse those. So I don't know if that's what they mean. Uh, here's some other you can roll on tables. Different sorts of things you can do. Um, a lot of it's there's there's always like multiple ways you can accomplish a lot of the same tasks within Fantasy Round. So um, you know earlier when I was doing sneak attack as an ability on my character sheet. If I wanted to just do like, I don't know, like mod uh, 2d6 for 2d6, I could drag that down to here, and then I could say, oh, there's my mod 2d6. Uh, oops, I need to give it mod. Uh, sneak attack. You can tell I haven't used this for a little while. Let's try that. Oh, I didn't like it. It didn't work. All right, so drawing a blank here. You could do numbers. I guess maybe if you have like mod, I don't know, plus two bless. Yeah, that would add it in. Yeah, I was thinking that we had it so you could do mods with uh, with dice rolls too, but I guess you'd have to roll the dice first. You'd have to just like die 2d6 that you could reuse. So this is what you could do for uh, sneak attack. You could type in something that you use frequently, drop that in there and just drag it down. Or you could just say, okay, well I got 2d6. You could just drag the dice down here and then you could say, well I'm ready to do my sneak attack. Let me clear this out. And you would roll the 2d6, get your result, and the result is a four. Then you could drag the four down to your modifier and then you could do your, your attack damage. So let's grab a little person to attack again. So let's say I attacked, uh, I'm ready to damage the hobgoblin. It would roll my d8 and then it would also add my extra four points of damage that I had in my modifier. So that's another way you could do it. 
All right. Uh, so we were going to look really quick at forging a magic item. Uh, if you're making a high level character and you had decided you wanted to purchase something that's not just already built in and available. So in order for this to really work well, uh, you can do a lot of this with the SRD magic items because there's some magic item templates and stuff in here. But frankly, they look better uh, if I show you the ones from the Dungeon Master's Guide. So I'm going to show you that. So I'm going to library modules. Wait for this to load up. One of these days I might actually make a, um, a test account with not all of our stuff in it. <laughs> so that would be nice. Uh, so it should save it into uh, Twitch as a video feed for at least a little while. I think uh, David has a way to go and take that and then... Um, make it persist longer. So I'll have to ask him how to do that basically or have him just kind of jump in and do that. Yeah. Uh, somebody, sorry, somebody asked if we could, if the video would be available longer. So yeah, it should be available on the videos for Twitch after the fact. All right, so I've got this loaded. Uh, actually, hmm, I probably should have turned off my SRD, but that's fine. I want to get rid of the magic items here because I only want my magic items from the Dungeon Master's Guide. All right, so if you go to items uh, here, all right, click on items, there's a little button, get rid of a few extra windows here, there's a little button here that says forge. And this opens up this nice little kind of thing here. And you see I've already got a few things in here. Let me clear it out real quick. All right, so this tells you what you're supposed to do. Drop, uh, drag and drop a library or campaign equipment to this window under the equipment column, and then drag a magic item template over to here. So let's say I wanted to have a magical, uh, let's look at weapons, maybe a uh, club. No, let's do it. Let's do a, a sword of some, some kind. How about if I just type in sword and search it? All right, lots of swords already. All right, so I want to start with a long sword. And let's actually make a combination, long sword and a short sword. All right, so I've got my weapons, and I want to make them magical. So if I look at templates, uh, there's a, say I want to make them a plus two, so I look at weapon plus two, put that in. If I just hit forge magic item, then what it's going to do is it's going to combine these two and make a plus two long sword and a plus two short sword. Alright, so now I've got these two things here, long sword plus two, and you'll see uh, it has a bonus of a plus two. Let's say I wanted to add uh, on weapon types. I wanted to make it a flame tongue. Flame tongue, if I look at it, says uh, it should add all of this extra stuff here, the description. Uh, it deals an extra 2d6 fire damage to any target it hits. So if I do this and hit forge magic item, it should make two plus two flame tongue versions of long sword and short sword. And so now you'll see if the description, it carried over the image from the player's handbook and stuck it in there for me on my custom version of the magic item, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then here it has the weapon notes. It tells me this has a plus two, plus it had all the extra uh, bonuses there as well. And then you can keep kind of mixing and matching and adding stuff. You can do the same thing with armor. There's different types of templates. There's an armor template, which has, uh, you know, whether or not it's mithril or a shield, plus one, plus two, plus three, that sort of stuff. If it's glamored, if it gives cold resistance, all that sort of stuff. You can combine them all uh, to your heart's content. In fact, let's do plate now. Or I'll just do a breastplate. There we go. 
for the player's handbook and let's do a fire resistance and plus two and um, maybe mithril. Now I have a mithril breastplate armor of fire resistance plus two. And it has the notes about what mithril means, what fire resistance means, and all that sort of stuff. Now some of these things you still may have to, the way our items are in Fantasy Grounds, you still may have to um, utilize our advanced effect systems to turn those on to your character, but you can make it so that it doesn't expire. So basically as soon as you have your weapon equipped, I'm sorry, your armor equipped, you have fire resistance. And then whenever you, um, you know, take off your armor, you're not, you haven't donned your armor for the day, you would just have that effect turned off so that if you got, you know, interrupted at camp, you'd be ready to go. Let's try Is that better? Uh, someone asked if I could up the text size a little bit. So okay, can you guys read that a little bit better? I, I did a uh, slash UI scale or scale UI 120, which made it 20% bigger. Maybe go a little bit bigger. Let's see, scale UI, let's say maybe 140. Okay, good. All right, so let's see. Oh, filling in the details. So um, leveling up, I kind of covered that a little bit. Let's see, we got about 20 more minutes maybe. Let's look at, uh, all right, so background, personality traits, ideals, that sort of stuff. So here's something I wanted to show, which is in Xanathar's Guide for Everything, uh, which I think I've already got opened. Let's see. Yep, I got the player's guide here. Let's make sure. Story templates. Okay. So these are kind of nice. If you're looking for a name, human names, non-human names, you can hit generate and it gives you a bunch of names. Arabic, Celtic, Chinese, etc. All the way down the line. And then you could use. Um, if you want a background story, this is really quite interesting because it has... Um, about your parents, about whether or not you had an absent parent, who your siblings were, family and friends, all that sort of stuff, and different life events that may have happened to you uh, and your backstory. So here you'll see it has first event and it has life events, and that's in brackets. So what does that actually mean? So if I look at tables here, so there's a table called life events, and you can customize all of this stuff too. So life events or life events by age. If I open that up, you'll see it's got um, percentile dice of all these different things that you might randomly roll on. And so what this is going to do is it's going to take all of these values from all these different tables and it's going to throw them into one big long story thing that you can then edit further and utilize as kind of like a creativity font for how your character came into being what they had to deal with. So let's try it. Let's see what it looks like. Do generate person tells me that um, I know who my parents are or were. Uh, this only applies if you're a half elf or a half orc. But it'll tell you that, well, if you were a half elf, then one of your parents was an elf and the other was a human, which I guess is important. It could be something else maybe. Uh, half orc could be orc and half orc. So, uh, or tiefling. If you had an absent parent, if that would have been uh, rolled earlier, then it, you, you'd have different results here. Uh, where I was birth, birthed, I was birthed among people of a different race. I've got five siblings, one of, uh, let's see, all of which are older, it looks like. Uh, I've got one of them who's a hunter or trapper, who's of neutral alignment, friendly, alive and quite successful. Another one who's an artisan or a guild member, neutral, friendly, alive but doing poorly due to injury, financial trouble, or relationship difficulty. So maybe that's a backstory type thing a DM could utilize. Uh, and then, you know, you could have some in here, like I saw one earlier when I was doing some testing where they had an evil um, evil sibling, <laughs> evil younger sibling, and then how would that work out when you've got other siblings which are all good and you have one evil sibling? Um, 
which some of us might be familiar with. Just saying. Uh, and then life events, you know, what are some things that have happened to you? Uh, you know, you went on an adventure, roll an adventure table to see what happened, blah, blah, blah. So uh, potential enemies, uh, dwarf guild member who's neutral uh, and alive and famous is one of your enemies. Potential friend is a human guild member who's neutral and alive and well. An important person is a dragonborn guild member uh, who's alive, but they're doing poorly due to injury, financial trouble, etc. So you can just recreate as many of these as you want and pull these uh, kind of information here. Or you can make random tables for all sorts of stuff uh, and then use that for your character. If you wanted to do, let's see, bonds and ideals and all that sort of stuff, uh, let's see, Freddy is a, a dwarf acolyte. So an acolyte has a background here, and you'll see under the backgrounds, uh, there's links to all the tables for acolytes. So acolyte personality trait, ideals, bonds, and flaws. So if I go back to my uh, notes section, uh, is it notes? There we go. All of these sections are currently blank. So let's grab personality trait. I can roll that into chat. And I can now grab this and put it under personality traits. I can do the same thing for ideal. And bonds. And flaws. There you go. Um, there's other tables you can do the same thing. If you don't want to choose your alignment or your deity, you could randomize all of that stuff. Uh, your gender and your age, you could kind of calculate that, fill it in. Um, one of the things I mentioned earlier was the um, languages. So in the, the drop-down list when you're creating your character to ask what languages you learned, that's important actually in Fantasy Grounds for a couple reasons. And that's because um, when you're logged in, you have a drop-down list here, which is filtered to the currently selected character. As a DM, I have access to all of them. But, for instance, I could select Dwarvish, and I could say, who spit in my beer? And it would write it out in Dwarvish text, and then only players who knew Dwarvish would know what, what, the, uh, what the dwarf said. And then they could converse back with that dwarf in Dwarvish, and then they would be able to carry on a conversation back and forth. And so we've had cases where we've had multiple players knew a certain language that other people didn't know, and they would have side conversations and stuff going on back and forth. And it was quite humorous because the GM could obviously see everything. Um, but yeah, quite quite interesting. And sometimes the NPC and a player uh, may know a specific language, and they'll have to carry on a conversation, but it doesn't get relayed to the rest of the party the same way that it was presented to that one character. And so uh, lots of different opportunities there. You can also do the same thing when you're doing when you're running an adventure. And you have a handout. You can make a handout in a specific language, and only certain players know what it actually meant. So it uh, becomes a great source of kind of role-playing inspiration there. Uh, I'm going to try, let's see. I don't know the best way I can show off um, a web page. But if you go to our wiki page, look under the effects, uh, take a look at there. There's a lot of examples for different sorts of things. Uh, you can turn on or off uh, enhanced uh, special abilities or features of, of a class that that are you know worthy of automation there will be uh, concrete examples there uh, also if you look on our forum under the 5e forum there are a boatload of sample characters that are leveled all the way up to level 20 so you can actually uh, load those up look at them see how they arrange all of them so like there's one I have one example here I could demonstrate I guess so there's one a rogue level 20 and this is one that's available on our forums uh, where is it? There we go. And so uh, it has examples of how you might set up an arcane trickster or an assassin or a rogue power, all these things. If I actually expand these out, you'll see um, versatile trickster allows me to adv uh, provide advantage on the attack to myself. So I can give myself advantage on my next attack by turning that effect on. Uh, let's see what magical ambush does. Uh, provides disadvantage to saving throws all uh, up until the next roll. So you could ambush somebody and, uh, and then they have disadvantage on their saving throw for right before you do your spell. 
death strike for an assassin. Um, this just has a, a con DC check. Again, you can expand these things out. You could adjust, you know, maybe it's not con in your game. Maybe it's uh, intelligence or something. So you could modify that sort of stuff. Um, I think champion, if I look at champion on the fighter, they have a, uh, a crit roll range changes. So I clicked on the magnifying glass for all of my weapons, and I can make it crit on a 19 to 20 instead of a 20. And then I, if they had extra uh, crit dice they could add it when they crit, they could add it for melee crits or range crits. So basically, you can always drill in. You can override a lot of functionality for whatever class you need. Um, you can modify types of damage that you deal. If um, you know your clubs are not bludgeoning clubs, they're uh, slashing clubs because they're made out of obsidian or something. You know, you could you could it, you could always override things to fit what you need your character to do within the world. All right. Any other questions? Yes, they could do that as well. So, yeah. Uh, okay, yes. Uh, so somebody asked, like, the Xanthar's Guide, if the DM has that. So, first off, if the DM has uh, a module, the DM can choose to share it with the players or not. Um, they can basically, under the library modules section... Do, 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 do. Uh, when it loads up, there's going to be a couple things that will show up. So uh, it'll have like a little red X or a green check mark that indicates whether or not players can access it. So like let's say Xanathar's Guide. Let's say I didn't want my players to actually have raw access to the Xanathar Player's Guide. I could drag this little X, block the player load. And even though this would normally be available to them, I've now blocked it. So I don't want them to use the Xanathar's Guide uh, Player's Guide. However, let's say that I really liked a, uh, a background from Xanathar's Guide. I could come here and I could grab... I'm not seeing any backgrounds in Xanathar's Guide. Uh, not the players. Um, okay, let's look at Curse of Strahd. Okay, so let's let's assume I did that with Curse of Strahd. I could grab the background and let's say I wanted to assign the Haunted One background to somebody. Then I could let them build their character and I would probably tell them, hey, just leave your existing background blank because we're going to add that after the fact. I'm going to assign you a background, for instance. So uh, let's try Freddy here. I could open up Freddy as a dungeon master and I could make Freddy, instead of an alkalite, he is now a haunted one. Uh, and then I could either ask him what skills he would want to choose, maybe arcana and religion, or I could set him on my end. And then that'll update his character sheet. And now he's that, that type of background. All right. Well, thanks everybody for uh, attending. If there are no more questions, um, I'll probably head off here and, pr and get ready for the next next event. Uh oh, now I lost Jen's voice for a second. Let me actually check real quick on chat. Oh, I think I hear you now. Jen? Okay, I'm sorry. I missed you for a second. You cut out for a sec. What was the last question or so that you asked? Uh, so if you try to open it, it'll show up on your character sheet here. However, if I try to click on this link, I'll get a note saying, hey, I don't have that module and it'll ask if I want to try to open and open this module that I don't have basically so um, you won't be able to share that with other players unless they also have it but you'll have it on your character sheet still uh, if they do have it you could drag any of these little shortcut links to chat here and then anyone who does have access to it can see it and then if a dungeon master has it the dungeon master can share it with all players
Uh, let's see. I think that is in. Okay, so the question was, when you level up, can you have it roll for the, the increase of hit points instead of just using the average? And I believe, let me double check real quick. I think we have an option here. I know we have for NPCs, NPCs use the average by default when you add them to the combat tracker, but you can also roll those. I want to say I thought we had something here. Let's see. NPC hit points. Let's see. PC. Uh, that's a good question. I, I'd have to kind of go back and look. I'm not seeing it in here actually to where it would do that. So I think it is actually uh, just maybe built in currently. You can change the number of inspiration slots that are available. Um, healing surges, slow natural healing, or standard. Let's see. PC encumbrance. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything that triggers that. Now, NPC hit points, you can make a max, random, or standard. Good question. Any other final questions? Otherwise, uh, thanks again for attending. I hope um, everyone had a good time. I hope it answered a lot of the questions and got you a little bit more comfortable with creating a character. I will say, if you haven't used Fantasy Grounds before, um, you know, hop in and give it a shot. You can pick up a subscription for like four bucks and play around with the standard license. You can pick one up for ten bucks and host players even if you wanted. Uh, and we do have a 30-day money-back guarantee on subscriptions, on licenses, on purchases, anything you want. So. Uh, you're welcome to go in and try. Um, you know, a lot of people ask us, what do I need to play Fantasy Grounds? Um, and so a lot of it depends on what the Dungeon Master has. If the Dungeon Master has an ultimate license, you can actually just download and, and use just the standard, uh, the demo from our website, not even a standard license. You don't have to buy anything. You just join their game, and then you would build the character while you're connected to the Dungeon Master. You would use any of their books to create your character, and then you would kind of go from there. Um, if you want to be able to build your character offline, one thing that I, I love to do is I like to build characters at different levels and see how they would potentially progress. Uh, and then, you know, maybe see, okay, well, how would I do at seventh level if I try these different pathways of, of character leveling? And I might try like some mock battles against different kind of characters. Oh, would I survive a battle against skeleton? Would I be effective against skeleton type creatures or undead creatures or, would I be effective against, you know, high strength characters, that sort of stuff. And so, you know, play out some mock battles, test some things out, maybe build two variants of your characters and then have them fight each other. You know, if you're if you're interested in combat effect, uh, effectiveness, you know, uh, if you're not, then, you know, focus on uh, the more the role playing aspects and then just kind of flesh that out more. But if you had it as your own version of the software to where you weren't having to do it connected to the dungeon master, you could build the character completely offline. Oh, that was one thing I was going to show and I forgot to do was once you've built your character, you can export them. So I've now built all of these different characters. And um, here, if I click on the little edit list, you'll see it now gives me export character options. So I can export um, new gal or new gal 2. And then where do I want to put them? And by default, it'll put it just in your documents. And I'll call it new gal Okay, and I've saved it. I could just email that file to somebody and then the dungeon master, when they have it, would just put this on their disk and then they would just say import char uh, or they could do it from here. See this little button says import. That's probably easier. Sorry, I fall back to my slash commands all the time, but um, they, could do, they could just click on the import character and then here just go back to, I think it was under my documents. Do, 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 do. There you go, right here. And now I've got a new version. And you see, this is the one that I just brought in, and it doesn't have a uh, portrait yet. So then they, all they would have to do, it has all of its stuff is all preset, just the way that the player left it. And then under the uh, assets, just go and assign a new portrait. There you go. All right. Uh, again, take a look at Fantasy Grounds. Give this a shot and uh, see what you think. Let us know on our 5e forums what you think about the character wizard. 
uh, what sort of stuff you would like to see us continue to add and um, you know any new any new requests that you have just let us know uh, we're always looking at that we're always monitoring things to, to decide what we want to add to our system to make it you know more welcoming and, and easier to get up and running quickly so thanks a lot everybody and have a great day thanks